Hello and welcome to Ionic Tips Weekly Episode 9, uh, the weekly Ionic show where we take a look at one small tip each week to try and become better Ionic developers. Uh, this week we're going to take a look at using ViewChild. A ViewChild is uh, supplied by the Angular library and we can use it to grab references to things in our template. And so if you've used JavaScript a little bit, you may be familiar with methods like uh, document.getElementById uh, or things like uh, the query selector to grab references to elements. Uh, in general, where we can, we should keep things, uh, I guess in the Angular world, we should do things the Angular way. And ViewChild is basically the way you would do this uh, instead of using getElementById. And in this video, I wanna focus specifically on just grabbing references to Ionic components with ViewChild. I do have uh, more in-depth uh, tutorials on view child and content child content children and the differences between those so I'll link to that uh, but I want to just keep this pretty basic so the way in which you use view child is you'll just supply uh, the view child decorator above um, above your constructor here and we can define any references we want uh, so we need to pass view child some kind of uh, parameter and so we can do this for example if we create uh, what is effectively an ID, a similar sort of approach to creating an ID on a specific element. Uh, we can add a, a template variable. So I might name this my content and then I could grab that with view child. So it's very similar uh, approach to using get element by ID. And then we just need to supply a name for that. So I'll call this just content area. And then we should be able to log this out here. And this should give us uh, a reference to uh, this content area here. So I'll save that and we'll just double check that that is all working. And you can see over in the console here, I have a reference to uh, my content. And this does come in handy in developing Ionic applications because some of Ionic's uh, components do offer additional methods we can use rather than just displaying things on the screen. Uh, they provide methods as well. So we can see here there's things like uh, the uh, ion scroll and things like that. So if we, for example, wanted to uh, scroll to the bottom or something, we could do this dot content area dot uh, scroll, uh, scroll to bottom, I think is uh, the method. And then that's going to scroll the list to the bottom uh, programmatically. And so this is one way to grab that reference, but I think perhaps the better way is rather than using these, uh, this uh, template variable here, uh, we can just grab it directly by its type. So what I can do is if I import content from uh, Ionic Angular, instead of supplying uh, this, uh, this variable here, this template uh, variable, I could instead supply the actual uh, component itself. And if we also give that a type of content, so we're using it in view child to say, well, we want to look through this template and grab uh, an element that is, uh, that has, that is of this type. And we want to call that content area. And then we're also assigning it a type of content. And the good thing about this is now if I, you know, if I was confused about that, uh, the method that I need to grab before, now I could just say this dot content area dot. And since it has that type now, we can see the various uh, methods and whatnot that are on that object. And I can see that it, the scroll to bottom method is there. So I could just use that if I wanted. Now, if you're confused as to what to actually reference here, what you need to import to pass to view child, uh, in general, it's just going to be, uh, for example, if we have ion content, the class is just going to be content or for ion list, it's going to be list for ion item, it would just be item. Uh, but if you are unsure, you can uh, find the best way is just to bring up the, the source code for Ionic in GitHub here. And you can look through the various components that are available. And so if I go into content, for example, and uh, just click on this content.tsx file, uh, you can see that the that content is what is being exported here. So before we finish this, let's just take a look at a couple more examples. So we also have the ion list in here and the ion item. Uh, so let's try grab the uh, list then. So I'll just uh, create a new view child. And this time we'll want to supply a list, which we'll of course need to import uh, from Ionic Angular first. And we'll just call this one my list. We'll give it a type of list. 
and again, we'll just log that out here. And again, since we have that uh, type set up, we could uh, just go this dot my list, and then we could see uh, what uh, methods are available on there. And we can see we actually have this close sliding items uh, method, so that's actually pretty useful to know. Uh, we, we don't have a sliding item list in this case, but if we did, we would know that that uh, method is available for us to use. And whilst we're at it, let's also add in a, a view child for the item as well. So we'll call this my item. And again, we're going to need to import that and we'll log that out as well. Okay, so let's see what we have in the browser now. Okay, so we have our references to uh, the content here and the list and the item and we can expand these to see all the methods and whatnot that are available on those. Uh, one important thing to note here though is that uh, we only have a reference to one item and obviously there's two items on here. Uh, so in cases where we want to grab a reference to uh, more than one item, we can use uh, view children, uh, the plural instead of view child. And then I can just change this to uh, view children and this actually returns a query list rather than a single uh, item. So what we're going to do is import query list from uh, the Angular library. And now we'll have this turn a query list of uh, the types of item. Uh, so now if we save that and take a look in the browser, uh, so we're actually getting undefined there. Uh, if we just change this to rather than on init, uh, we want to render or check these values after the view has initialized. Uh, so I'll change this to uh, after view init. Change that to after view init. And this to ng after view init. Uh, so hopefully we get those, uh, those values now. Okay, so we have the query list uh, now. And if we expand that, uh, we can see, uh, we can see a lot of things in here actually, but we have a list of all of the items. We can grab the first item or the last item. Uh, but one cool thing about the query list is that you can also listen to uh, changes on this. So this actually returns an observable that you can subscribe to. And if we were to listen for those changes, what we could do is every time, say if we were uh, dynamically adding items to this list, uh, that observable would trigger and then we could do something. Uh, so that's a little more uh, advanced sort of stuff, but it is a very cool functionality. And the last thing I want to cover about ViewChild is that we can also grab a reference to the actual native DOM element that the content represents, for example, or the list. Uh, so obviously we can see the various methods that content has here, but uh, perhaps we wanted a reference to the actual uh, DOM element. What we can do is use element ref so again, if we just import that from the Angular library, we can tell ViewChild to read a specific thing here. So if we say read element ref on our content, if I save that now, and we can't call uh, scroll to bottom on that anymore because uh, it's referencing the DOM element. So just refresh that again. And you can see here now we have an element ref and we have the native element of ion content. Uh, so I can expand that out. And then this is just your regular sort of DOM element properties here. And so this is uh, this is similar to what you'd get if you were to use say document.getElementById. For comparison's sake, let's actually try that. As I mentioned, you know, you want to avoid using document.getElementById, but we're going to uh, do that just to compare those. So I'll just call this my content area and then we will just log that out down here. So console.log document.getElement by ID, my content area. And so you can see we're getting that actual DOM element there, which is the same as element ref. If I was to just reference that directly on content area, the native element, we would see, how come that didn't work? Oh, I'm still giving this a type of uh, content. That should be an element ref now, not a not content. And you can see there. So yeah, you're basically getting the same thing uh, for the document element, element by ID and the view child now because we're reading that native DOM element, uh, but without that 
uh, we instead get a reference to the actual uh, the content object here and we can call various methods on it. So uh, in most cases, this is probably what you want. You'll probably be wanting to access I on scroll or scroll to bottom, those kinds of things. And there are other methods available on, on other Ionic components. Uh, so most of the time you'll probably just use view child, supply that and access it that way. Uh, but there may be cases where you do want direct access to the DOM element, in which case you can use that read property. But again, that's uh, kind of more advanced stuff. Um, you probably won't really need to do more than just this kind of stuff that's right here. So as I mentioned, I will link to additional uh, tutorials on view children and another thing called content children. Uh, so you can check that out if you're interested in learning a bit more about this stuff. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Uh, if you liked it, please do feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.